Hi, everyone. Thanks for making the left turn, and welcome to the Jack's Left Report for today, Sunday, July 28, 2013. I'm George Farrar, and I'm very happy to be here today to talk with you once again about Jacksonville politics. And for the next several Jack's Left Reports, I'll be talking with you about the mayor's proposed budget for the city of Jacksonville. Every year on the Left Turn Network, we look at the budget. Uh, it is that time of year again for the mayor and the city council to work out the budget. All of this has some direct impacts on the people of Jacksonville because we find out if our taxes are going to go up and we find out what services are going to be cut and what services are going to be enhanced, if any. And so I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to come out to you out here on YouTube and talk about these things and do it in a very plain manner. I want to tell it like it is. I want to bring politics here in Jacksonville closer to you. Uh, and also the government of Jacksonville closer to you and also be able to kind of communicate with you uh, what I think is going on and maybe call your attention to some different things that are happening. And we do this uh, every year in our budget specials and I hope that uh, here on the Jack's Left channel that I'm able to once in a while come to you and bring to you these reports. So uh, this Sunday and then this coming Wednesday and then the following Sunday again, I'll be talking about the budget. Uh, first, I'll talk about the, the political environment, the realm of politics uh, downtown at City Hall. I'll talk about that uh, in this report, as well as I'll introduce you to the budget. Uh, we'll talk about some very, very basic things, things like revenue, expenses, hiring, uh, and uh, I'll talk briefly about priorities and where we're at. And then uh, on the following reports, I'll be talking about uh, programs of priorities and capital improvements. And uh, so uh, uh, I want to really bring these concepts to you and really simplify them in a way to where everyone, I think, will be able to kind of take a look at it and, 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 and obtain uh, some information and kind of get an idea of what's going on down at City Hall. Because I think that there's uh, a lot that's going on and we need to be focused on it. We need to hold our politicians accountable because if we don't know what's happening, how can we decide who to vote for again uh, when that time comes in 2015? So I'm very pleased to be able to bring this to you today. First of all, I'd like to talk about what's been going on over the past several weeks downtown. I, uh, For the past two weeks, I've been downtown. I was downtown on Monday, July 15th. I was downtown at City Hall protesting the mayor's uh, proposed budget cuts on the day of the morning of the mayor's budget presentation to the city council. So uh, I enjoyed having that opportunity. And then the following week, I was back on Tuesday, the 23rd of July. I was back downtown in front of City Hall at the uh, Save Our Libraries rally, protesting the budget cuts uh, against our public library. So there's a lot that's at stake. There's a lot that's happening. And not only that, not only outside of City Hall is a lot happening. There's a lot ha happening inside of City Hall because the mayor had no sooner as finished his speech to the city council on the 15th when the city council came back and said, this budget is ridiculous. Uh, it is incompetent. Uh, it is not what's going to go forward. Uh, we don't like what we're seeing. And then that following week on the 23rd of July, the city council got together in their city council meeting and boy, did some amazing things happen. First of all, the city council, without a lot of debate or talk, decided to go ahead and uh, raise taxes tentatively. So they've tentatively announced that they're going to raise taxes on the people of Jacksonville. And, uh, you know, I think at this point, uh, it's, I guess you may, as you look at the budget, maybe a little bit longer, you may question why that was necessary. But but let's start off with the presumption that uh, that the city council really feels that their back uh, is against the wall. So they've decided to go ahead and it looks like we're going to have our taxes go up, not by a very wide margin, but they are going to go up uh, unless something happens between now and the end of September. So the timeline, the mayor proposes the budget, the city council debates and goes back and forth on it. The city council finally passes the budget. They also have to certify the tax rolls. They have to do all of this by the end of September. They're mandated by the state of Florida to have all this done by the end of September. Because really, cities and counties, they are given their power at will or their power 
uh, by the state. And so there's certain things the city has to actually do by a certain time point to be ready for the beginning of the fiscal year and to meet the obligations for tax taxation. So uh, that's where things are at right now. And uh, what I'd like to do uh, is uh, also, before we jump into the budget, I do want to remind you that all of this was put into place, what we're going to look at is put into place based on a presumption that the mayor had about the pension plan. Uh, there was a pension plan proposed uh, uh, by the mayor that was worked out between the firemen and the policemen. And uh, now the what had happened on the 23rd uh, was that the city council president just suddenly pulled out the pension plan that would have resulted in some substantial savings uh, over many years for the city, pulled out this plan and threw it up for a vote, uh, much to people's shock and surprise. And of course, it failed because people didn't have enough information with which to make a decision. And I would note uh, that a majority of the uh, at-large city council people didn't want to make a move on this to vote for the plan. So all of this is against that backdrop with that context. Uh, and I think that maybe the mayor probably shouldn't have gone so uh, as hard on the pension uh, on the council as he should have. And I think he's coming to regret it now. But I feel like uh, the plan didn't get a real uh, true study analysis by the city council. So uh, distressing, very distressing, especially when you begin to look at the numbers. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to bring up the budget. As I did last year, I want to tell you something. You know, you're not just seeing some Yahoo yik yakking about the city budget on YouTube. This Yahoo has a bachelor's degree in political science from Florida State University that I earned in 1997. And not only that, I earned a master's degree in public administration with a focus on local government. Uh, at least that was my uh, focus in my studies. I got that master's degree in 1999. I've looked at uh, numerous local budgets over the years. And really, I find that when you want to look at a 400 to 500 to 700 page document, you really need to look in those first 20 pages. One thing, though, I will point out, one thing I find that's disappointing is, though, while I could go and I could pull the mayor's speech, and I could have been there that morning, and I could pull up a speech right there out there on, uh, uh, on the uh, city of Jacksonville's website uh, from what the mayor had to say about the budget, one thing I find distressing is there's, there's no executive summary in this thing. Uh, you know, if anything, a, a letter of courtesy. Yes, I'm aware that these programs are not as being funded this year. Our involvement with the federal government, the state government, has resulted in this. Uh, we, uh, we have uh, talked about the pension and the pension uh, deal that we're trying to work out is involved with this. So really what you have is a, a document, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at it now, that, that uh, just basically has a bunch of numbers in it. And, uh, and it has, you can still find some different things. And so I want to start off very briefly this report. Uh, I'm not going to go on and on. I'm not going to preach at you. I'm not going to talk about subgroup A and subgroup C and whether subgroup C and subgroup D will mean anything in several years. This is really a chance for us to take a quick look, this report, and then I'll start looking at programs and drilling down. Nice, beautiful view of the Atlantic Ocean on this. So we've now moved to uh, the... Uh, Table of contents, you can basically see what I'm talking about. There's no executive summary on this thing, and I'm just really surprised about that. I mean, you basically have just, as I said, about over 400 pages, and I'm sure as you look at the capital improvements budget, there's some other pages that go along with this. So uh, what I'd like to really do is look at the summary of budgets. I'd like to look at where things are at. And, you know, you're probably not getting probably the, the best uh, this year. Uh, I hope to provide to you more, but there's just so much to talk about. But let's really boil it down to the numbers. And I hope to do, to do right by you. And I hope to give you uh, ultimately what it is that, that, um, 
that you want to see uh, and, and what you need for generally, I guess, kind of gain an understanding of where things are at. So I'd like to look at, first of all, at revenues, because that's what it's all about. Uh, so we have these, uh, these, the, all these different um, subgroups within these different funds, the main fund being the general fund. Take a look at this. Some things jump out at you. Mosquito control, 286,627. Now it's proposed at 63,103. Um, that doesn't look too good. Uh, I know because I have to smash mosquitoes uh, every day uh, on my front porch, and I don't like mosquitoes. Mosquitoes carry disease. Now, when you look at all the vast expenditure spending, uh, spending on our things like our sports convention, tourism, and uh, some of the different things that we spend money on, uh, you have to look at the fact that, well, you know, if everyone catches encephalitis and dies, uh, there ain't going to be that many people to fill up our stadiums. There's one thing that's constant, and it's constant over the past couple years since I started covering this. We're into the second year. But you'll see a lot of debt that's held based on our intent entertainment venues. And we'll look at that uh, briefly today, and then I'll talk more about it later on in our, our, our reports. So uh, we have things on here like the Mayport Ferry, the stadium, the arena, the baseball stadium, performing arts center, the convention center, the equestrian center, uh, the sports complex. Uh, we have a tremendous amount of debt on these projects, on these, 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 um, these kinds of things. Uh, we are in debt in the entertainment business, uh, and I'd like to see our city get out of the entertainment business. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to look at hiring also. But before I get to that, let's look at revenue, actual incoming money coming in. What we were looking at is in and out. Let's look at what's coming in. Uh, net ad valorem taxes proposed $426,228,722. Uh, that's less, of course, than last year. Taking into account foreclosures, less money coming in. And uh, so we have less money coming in on franchise fees. We have uh, just less money coming in overall. In fact, uh, less money coming in on non Department of Revenues, uh, the difference looks like we've gone from 896 million 57,344 to 871,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,
We're going to spend more on neighborhoods. That makes some sense because we have some money coming in from the neighborhoods. So it looks like some, some money that they're able to keep. Uh, interesting here, though, we would spend more on libraries despite these proposed budget cuts. But now with the tax revenue, with enhanced tax revenue coming in, it sounds like, from what I'm hearing, that we're not going to be having those library closures. What about the fire department? Uh, that's a good question. And then we've got some specifics on city, sit, different city programs. And I'll be drilling down on those, so don't worry about that. Uh, I'm really drilling down a lot of these different programs and stuff. Uh, I spent a lot of time this report, and you know what? We're about to wrap it up. Uh, once we get done with the hiring aspects or the hiring section. But uh, more money is being spent on veterans. Less money is proposed to be spent on the general counsel's office. The mayor has the sheriff's office spending considerably less money from $366 million $768,040 to $360,727,755. But I think that's questionable as to what the sheriff's going to go along with. Look, Parks and Recreation, there's a jump right there, proposed budget, a proposed jump in the budget. So interesting how, look at public works, look at the jump in expenditures on public works that's proposed. So it's not that the budget's being completely slashed. So I got some questions coming out of this one. I got more questions than I have answers. I have lots of questions, lots of concern. And these are f certain alarm bells going off on this. Uh, don't let your eyes get glazed over. Look at those different things. Go back and forth. Look up and down. But look at those total numbers. And look how it progresses. Right now, we're just looking over two years. But you start looking at the capital improvements plan and budget and what our obligations are and what everything looks out like over the next couple of years, which they haven't quite. Folks, I don't know if they've actually quite. Hmm, that's interesting. Hmm. A lot of this stuff should be projecting off into multiple year, into years down the road. Uh, we need to be looking into 2017. Okay. Well, I, you know, I have to say, if it's one thing I have to say that I agree before we jump into hiring, then we'll finish talking about that, uh, that uh, I am particularly concerned about, um, uh, I'm particularly concerned. Of, uh, I think that they're right in their concern about the way the budget was formulated this year. I think there are some questions, and I think we all deserve some answers. So I, I will have to say I agree with the council and agree with certain observers that, that there are some valid concerns about the budget. Uh, and, you know, I want to give the mayor the benefit of the doubt. You won't hear a lot of very sharp criticism coming uh, from me right now on Mayor Brown because I know what's been thrown at him, but we need to start pulling enough together to decide for those of us on the leftist, on the progressive side of Jackson politics, where do we stand going into the latter part of next year, 2014, as things start to gear up, as things start to gear up for, uh, for, the, uh, for his uh, re-election campaign. And so I think there's some valid questions that we need to ask. I think part of studying the budget is studying where is his, where is the mayor's priorities and ultimately, where will the city council end up on this? So, all right, let's take one last look at the budget, and then we're going to call it a day. And I do mean we'll call it a day. It'll be a sharp goodbye because I've talked about a lot. Let's look at what the mayor's proposing on actual full-time employee positions with the city of Jacksonville. Let's look at where he's cutting. Uh, advisory boards and commissions down by one. Employee services down by four, finance down by five, human right human rights commission down by one, down by seven on intergovernmental services. You'll see some things will correspond between the money and the positions, obviously. Uh, mayor's office would gain uh, would gain people. Military affairs, veterans, and disabled services would gain by two. Neighborhoods, though, would actually lose by thirteen positions. Office of Economic Development would gain by eight. Ethics would gain by one. The sheriff would lose 11 positions. Again, I think we need to hold out for what the sheriff is angling for, or he'll end up with. Parks and Recreation, vast cuts there in hiring or in uh, employees. Uh, 
planning and development lose by six. Public libraries loses by 33 under this proposed budget. Uh, we'll see where that stands with some of the fix from the council on the taxes. Public works gains by 159. Major improvements, in, 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 uh, major gain in expenditure. Actual overall employee, full-time employee positions would gain to 65. So this is where things are at. This is where the city's priorities are at coming out of City Hall. So where are the big gains? The big gains are happening in public works, though to hear the council tell it, we wouldn't be under this budget, and I'd have to do some digging on that. We wouldn't have enough money for full uh, expenditure to uh, pave roads starting in the new fiscal year and to pave our local roads, so to fill potholes and things like that. So you see my concern. Uh, I mean, you would see some gains, for example, with fire and rescue, but then there was talk of budget cuts for to, to close two fire stations. So sometimes when you look at these numbers, you don't see as much. It's when you look, maybe you look at the, at the employees, and then you have to drill down. You have to really drill down on what's going on. And now, you know, debt, I haven't had enough time to spend up talking about debt. But I want to just roll you through what we're seeing so far as debt because uh, it, it it's remarkable and uh, you'll see a lot of these things are by capital project by basically by park by dock by improvement drainage improvement along certain roads uh, basic things categories of expenditure but let's look at debt service briefly, and then we'll call it a day. Uh, the Better Jacksonville Trust Fund, uh, that may be more associated with debt, though that was a lot of expenditure happening in 2002, 2003. A lot of different things, improvements of all things on the libraries and and uh, with, uh, with the new Duval County Courthouse. But you'll notice as you go through here, you can see substantial amounts spent on principal and interest on debt. For example, let's just... I like to particularly look at the stadiums. I mean, solid waste, we understand this is particular for um, expenditure on solid waste disposal operations. Uh, a bond pulled out in 2009, look at the amount of principal uh, that has to be paid. $3,220,000 in interest, $408,200, uh, just in a total $3,628,200 just on this specific line item debt alone. But let's look, shall we, at Municipal Stadium. Uh, that's what I look at, and I can't go into all the debt. Maybe we'll work on that next report, because I think this is where we need to, to jump off at. But uh, you can see with, uh, with it, the uh, amount that's owed, uh, $11,358,338 was, uh, was the actual. And what we're proposing is uh, of course going to be less because there's been uh, more that's been paid off, but we'll start to look at percentages eventually. And but it's still really bad. Let's talk about refinancing all this debt. But every obligation that we make for entertainment to keep ourselves entertained is one less sewer line that can be spent on, one less road that can be worked on, one less firefighter on the street. One less effective program for the libraries, one less uh, policeman, firefighter, animal control officer. Uh, this is what I've tried to do, basically. I've, every year I try to make sense of the budget, and every year I, I feel like I'm throwing a lot at you. But if anything, it gives you food for thought. It gives you something to think about as to where we're at. And I want to thank you for watching. We'll be back on Wednesday, uh, this coming Wednesday. Uh, with uh, another report focused on the budget. We'll do another one the following Sunday, uh, and uh, then we'll, uh, we'll talk it out. Uh, we'll keep on talking about it out on our forums, on Facebook, uh, on Jacksonville, Jacksonville Perspectives, and uh, on the Left Turn News Group. So I want to encourage you guys to please let me know what you think. Thanks for watching this incredibly long report, probably one of the longer ones I've done. Thanks for watching. I'll see you Wednesday. I'll see you out there. 
on Jacksonville Perspectives and the Jacks Left on Facebook. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. See you later.